Hey everybody, welcome to the stream. I'm back. It's been a couple of weeks. I know I took a, a week off for vacation and then it just worked out that I couldn't make it on last Wednesday. So we're back and we're in action. So we're going to do a little bit of turning today. Uh, if you guys remember, we did a little bit of resin bending not too long ago, a little while ago. Uh, and so I, I was kind of looking at these blanks and I thought, let's turn one of these things up. We never did see how any of them turned out. So that's what we're going to do today, a little bit of turning. Uh, all the pressure pots are taken up because I am doing thousands and thousands of batches of pine cone blanks right now, trying to get uh, a big order uh, for Turner's Warehouse, actually. I'm going to be wholesaling through them. I'm trying to get that done as well as I'm, I'm broadening the, the pine cone blanks that I sell as well. And so we are full of, uh, the pressure pots are full. So we're gonna do a little bit of turning since the lathe is wide open and it's been aching to, to be used because I haven't been on it for a while. So anyway, I hope you guys are all doing good. I had a pretty good vacation. It ended up being a staycation. We were gonna go to LA and then pandemic happened again. So we decided to just stay around here and do some fun stuff actually. We did things that, that uh, I don't know, we probably wouldn't have done otherwise necessarily. We tried to do that kind of stuff, be tourists a little bit around here. So it was actually really fun. And the nice thing was there was fires everywhere and we were actually on the, the be ready to evacuate list. So kind of worked out that I think it was probably better that we didn't go to LA because that would have worried us a lot more. Luckily, the fire didn't come anywhere near us. Uh, it was just more of a very, very cautious kind of thing by the, the, the Douglas County, but Anyway, uh, so luckily it's not so smoky anymore. We were getting just dumped on, like rained on by ash uh, for a while there. And it was a little bit worrisome, but uh, we're out of the woods now. So uh, things are looking good. So I hope you guys are doing good today. Let's see here, who was here first? It looks like Dominic was here and Martian followed right behind him. And Richard, nice. Lots of people. David's here and Doug, how's it going, Doug? and Gene and Kim and Twyla, let's see here. And, and uh, Mark's here, nice. And Eric, so lots of people. So uh, I'm not gonna mess around, let's get over to the lathe, let's start uh, turning this thing up. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna make a wine stopper. This thing's pretty short. Uh, we were just kind of doing experiments. Probably, typically I would wanna have like another half inch on this thing for typically, but Either way, it doesn't really matter. We're gonna test it out. So a couple of issues that could pop up, uh, you know, maybe um, doing this. So what we did was re we recast. We, we cast something and then like bent it. Um, uh, how did we do this? I guess we, we didn't let it fully cure. Is that right? Hmm. It's been a while. I think that's what we did. We just kind of let it kind of halfway cure up and then recast it. So I don't anticipate that there are any um, adhesion issues necessarily with these. They should have, uh, you know, kind of adhered pretty well. Usually when you're dealing with resins, uh, you know, one thing you don't, typically you don't want to be casting things that are very, you know, smooth, glossy kind of kind of stuff because there's nothing for the resin to really grab onto. Um, it doesn't like, it's, it's not gonna melt into itself. It's just kind of sticking like glue. And so if the surface, <clears throat> excuse me, if the surface is really shiny, smooth, um, you know, you can have adhesion issues and things can kind of crack or come apart. Um, in this case though, if you're gonna be casting something where you cast one thing really, and then like within, you know, 30 minutes or something like that, you recast it, usually because everything's kind of curing together, you're okay. Um, it usually adheres really well, even if it was kind of a smooth top surface. Um, and I would say that that kind of falls within like 24 hours. You really want to definitely recast things within 24 hours if possible. Um, so that's another reason why I like Alumalite clear and clear slow because you can pull it out of the pressure pot and it's fully hardened up. Um, a lot of your epoxies, they take a little bit longer and, and you kind of start getting a little bit further out of that 24 hour period. But I think next day with those ones, you're probably okay as well. So anyway, let's see here. Jacob's here. What's up, man? I haven't seen you for a while. Welcome. All right, so uh, let's, like I said, let's head over to the lathe. We got this thing, I got the view set up. So I, I cut off the little top part of this thing. Um, it had a little, a little bit hanging out. So I can actually recast this. Now, again, what we were just talking about though, this. This thing is super you know, smooth and shiny. So what I would wanna do is scuff it up with some sandpaper, uh, maybe some like 180 grit or something like that, um, just to give the, the resin something to kind of bite into, um, you know, 
And it's, that goes for, you know, if you're gluing things together, you know, epoxy glue, five minute epoxy or whatever, um, it always works better to kind of scuff that surface up. So we got our easy chuck. I'm just gonna chuck this up. We're gonna drill. I didn't do the, the insert this time, um, like glue it in or any, and all that kind of stuff. I, we're just gonna, I kind of forgot, but I also, I wouldn't have done it anyway. Um, so we're just gonna drill and tap threads into the resin itself. That's a perfectly fine way of doing it. So we're gonna need a, let's see, we need a, it's been a while. We need my little stubby drill bit and a 3816 tap. Not 3816. This one should be. So the threads for your, your, uh, your kits, bottle stopper kits and, and quite, a, quite a few of the other ones. These threads on, on this little stopper, that's 3 8 16. So I got, let's see, the drill bit that you want to use, I think is like a 5 16. I'm not sure what this one is. I kind of have this little stubby one that somebody sold. I can't even read that. Something 16. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it looks like... Mm, 15 16 no Wait a minute. i'm looking at my chart here oh three sixteenths maybe no five sixteenths five sixteenths that's what this drill bit is i had to think about that it took me a while five sixteenths drill bit and then we have a three eight sixteenths tap i hadn't thought about this i haven't done a the drilling and tapping for quite a while i've been doing the um uh, the inserts on most of the things that require this type of thing. So, all right, so we got our chuck here. I'm going to drill. And then you, you can kind of measure on that little, on the little stopper guy. Where'd it go? Oh, you know what I forgot was to get my... Actually, I think I put a mark on that drill bit because I always use, this, use it for this. But uh, I forgot to get my phone out so I can re see the, the chat, guys. I'm going to see the chat, see what's going on. Okay. There we go. Frank's here. What's up? Connie. Nice. Okay, I'm caught up on the on the chat. So anyway, we have our little uh, bottle stopper guy. So you just want to kind of measure that, make sure you're drilling a little bit, a little bit more than than that. So I, don't, I actually don't even know how how deep this thing is. Let's see here. So it's about half an inch or so. You probably want to go a little bit more than that. Let's see, I, and I have a mark actually on my on my drill bit. Yeah, it's a little bit deeper than that. So not bad if you can get a, a drill bit that you always use for this type of thing for stoppers. So I got a little mark right there. That's actually probably deeper than I even need to go, but that's okay. Flip my screen here. Is it too bright? Let me, no, it's looking pretty good actually. Maybe a little bit bright on the screen there. Now that I have that light on. I'm going to... I'm going to lower the exposure just a little bit. That's that should be good. Okay, get some glasses on. See what's going on here. We're drilling these threads and then we're going to use the the mandrel from stainless bottle stoppers. my mark go? I lost my mark. Okay, that ought to be good. So we drilled our hole. And then again, we're going to use our little tap here. 
I'm just going to chuck it up in the same drill chuck. And then I'm going to apply a little bit of pressure to the back of my tailstock and then spin. You can spin it wherever you want. I usually use the hand wheel. And spin your, your blank. If you, if you, I'm going to really crank that. I, I don't have a, ch uh, a keyed chuck. It's keyless chuck, which I like a lot better. But um, I'm just going to crank it down to hopefully make sure this thing doesn't come out. It doesn't walk it, back it off. It's not a big deal, but... I'm going to go in a couple a couple threads and then back it out and kind of clear some of those chips until we bottom this guy out. And I'm using a bottoming tap. Uh, the difference is, and I forget the, the name of the other one, but uh, the other style, there's a couple different types of taps. And I can't find my other ones. Starting tap? I'm not sure what they call them. Um, but the starting ones, the ones that you use to start, are kind of tapered. Let me go find an example. I don't know what happened to the, yeah. my other one. Huh. If I can find one. I know I have some somewhere. But I don't know where they are. Well, I don't have any, I guess. I don't know, I don't know where, where I put them. Um, but other taps have kind of a tapered nose and, and it's, you know, the threads are kind of tapering in so you can't get to the bottom. That's why you want to use a bottoming tap if you're trying to tap threads, you know, into a hole like this. The starter ones are, are good to kind of get things started. To kind of help with that but everything's lined up you know so i don't even need to use a starting tap really to do this Whee! squeaky okay now it's always a good idea to double check and make sure before you start doing anything that your stopper will screw all the way in. Good to go there. And that your mandrel, you know, we're gonna have to put it on the mandrel anyway, but you always wanna make sure before you move on to make sure everything works. Okay, we are ready to rock and roll. Making shaving time. Frank! I'm glad you're here too, buddy. Wait, I think I missed another super chat. Frank and Richard, thank you guys for the super chats. I appreciate it. That's awesome. You guys rock. Been gone for two weeks. I come back and you guys are super chatting it up. I appreciate it. All right, so. We are ready to rock and roll here. We're just going to flip that. And uh, this, this is the universal mandrel. Actually, let me talk about this. Because I don't really, I don't think I really highlight this. And I don't know, some of you guys might not really realize what's going on. These are, these are really cool. Stainless bottle stoppers came out with these things. I call it the universal mandrel. The only thing that I don't like is these washers. <laughs> They're kind of a pain to get off. I wish they would just drill the holes a little bit bigger. Get over the threads. But anyway... Um, so what they are is it's almost like bushing. Well, it's it's bushings. It's kind of like pen kits. And so they got different bushings that you can get with this universal mandrel. And they all slide on for different types of kits. And that tells you, you know, where where to, you know, cut it down to. So this one this one matches the the bottle stopper size. Kind of like a pen bushing pen kit. So it's a pretty snazzy setup, uh, pretty pretty brilliant idea. I always I like to have these little washer things just so you don't it gives you a little bit of space when you're kind of cut, cutting, you know th that that shoulder, um, and it just also helps you make sure that the thing doesn't stick. Hey, okay. here we go.
Get on there. Okay. Now we are ready for shaving time. Making shavings time. Yeah, these mandrels are really good. They make stainless bottle stoppers make some really nice stuff. Pretty, pretty happy with them. Okay. I got my, my glasses on here. Get my tail stock up. <clears throat> so this was a two inch blank that we poured. Uh, you know, for, for a bottle stopper, most, most bottle stoppers are, are like one and a half inch, typically. Um, but, you know, a little extra. Ain't gonna hurt nothing. All right. I'm going to take my watch off. I don't need that. And... I think I'm going to go for the... Uh, the, the dust collector as well. I know it's loud, but and it sure is nice. Keeps all that dust out of my lungs and face. So a couple seconds here and I'm gonna change, change my blast gate settings here. There we go. All right. All right, so let's stop and see what's going on here. I'm gonna bring the camera around. I'll turn off the dust collector for a sec while we do this. Let's, uh, let's get this camera in here. Don't look at the camera. High tech, high tech camera switching here. Wanted to kind of give you a front view for a sec real quick so we can kind of Look and see what's going on here with this. Kind of an interesting blank. Let's zoom in. Center it up a little bit better. All right, so I'm cutting into it a little bit. I think, yeah, right, like right there. I think this is gonna be kind of neat looking. I think what, one thing that I really wanted was a little bit tighter. I wanted it to be wrapped a little bit tighter in there or, or a t you know, a tighter curl, I guess, bend, angle, <laughs> curvature uh, of the green thing. Um, but, you know, whatever. It is what it is. But I think it might be kind of cool. Now, one thing that I can't remember is if we used Amazing Clearcast or um, Illumilite Clear for the clear part. Uh, but I do know that we used my micro starlight glitter in there as well. I don't know. Can you, is that, is that glare kind of killing the view? All I can see is my, the view in this. That's, what if I do that? There we go. What about that? I'm going to increase the exposure just a little bit here. There, that's that. There, that shouldn't be as glary, maybe. Anyway, it's looking pretty cool. I'm, I'm pretty excited about this thing. Excited to see what what this thing turns out like. I think I'm just gonna keep the camera over here. I think it'll be a little easier. I'm gonna hit the light again, which probably is gonna blow you guys out. 
you should do automatic. I don't know. Anyway, let's see what you guys are saying about it. <laughs> How many watches you ruined welding? Yeah, I bet. <clears throat> all right sorry i was kind of reading around yeah ruth niles is another vendor um they both have pretty much similar things i know the guys over at stainless bottle stoppers so i tend to buy from them because they uh, they talk to me. <laughs> They're really nice guys over there. Um, it's been pretty cool because I've done a couple videos and um, like one one in particular, they came out with those those honey dippers, and they were so excited. They're like, "Oh man, your video is you know every every show we go to, somebody walks up to us and is like, yeah, I saw your stuff in your you know these honeycomb things and or, or honey honey dippers in that video from Zach." pretty cool Still haven't really cut into that too much. I don't necessarily have a plan for this. I'm just cutting away. Sometimes that's, I don't know, it's always nice to have a plan and like, you know, execute your plan and all that, but a lot of times it's kind of fun just to cut away and see what happens. Ooh. That's pretty neat looking right there. I don't know if you guys can see that. So I'm pretty sure that this is amazing clear cast. I can kind of, there's, oh, I lost my, my tool. You know what I need to get is a little tool rack on my uh, on my lathe because they tend to drop tools all the time. Okay, so let's get you guys kind of over here. That will be a project that I make someday. So we're starting to get kind of an interesting little little weird thing going on. So I'm hope that was what I was hoping is that you would get some kind of weird. You have all these kind of shapes and, and different patterns going on, and when you cut into it and make it round, or, or I don't know, I guess it already, already was round, but um, once you start cutting and, and making different shapes into it, it'll, it'll kind of create even more weird things that you didn't even think of. So, I don't know. This thing's pretty cool. It's an interesting idea. And you don't even need to do the resin bending thing, necessarily. I mean, you could, you know, you could probably just cast something you know make a mold of something or cast something um, that's kind of like a little bit of a taco or after the fact just heat it up and kind of you know bend it over and then and then recast it like this um, i was trying to do it like boom boom you know where we cast the the little green thing and then uh, uh you know once it was basically ready to be pulled out then we recast it in resin Yeah, Lumalite Clear, 
slow. I guess it does have, I don't know, I guess, I guess that's the one that I'm used to because that's what I usually use. Um, and epoxies all kind of smell, I guess, the same. So you're right, distinct is a good way to put it. Definitely smells different than epoxy. I think it kind of, I don't know. I think it smells a little bit better. I might just be used to it though. All right, so let's keep going here. Kinda liking this shape though, I'll tell you that. It's kinda neat. Um, anyway, having a little bit of a cove and then I'll, I'll take some more down here off. Um, but kind of like doing a, oh, what do you call that? Just like an angle on the top and then we'll have a cove and then this other cove. I think that'll be kinda cool looking. So I've kind of cut a, a lot of that away down here, and so we just have barely any green. So I think I'm going to stay away from that from now on. back up to the top here and see what we can do. What does that look like? Let's get you guys in a little bit closer here. Kind of come around here. Oh, there it is. Kind of bobbling around. Get out of here, shavings. Oh, yeah. Got some weird kind of... This is going to be pretty neat looking, I think. All right, so I'm going to keep going at it. I'm going to hack away at this. How about we zoom out a little, huh? <laughs> I got a little excited.
All right, so just a little bit more here. I'm just gonna kind of try and clean up. That cove a little bit. Let's, uh, let's get this tail stock out of the way so we can get a little bit better look. I think I'm going to move the camera around to the back side of the lathe. That way you can see what I'm doing with the tool. Yeah, it's going to be kind of a big, eh, I don't know, sort of big. Not too bad. It's a little bit short and stubby. I don't know. Give you a good handle to grab. Grab a hold of, you know. Sometimes you just need a bigger stopper. Okay, so let's get our slightly larger uh, tool rest. I like that. I think that's all I'm going to do. That's a little bit of a kind of a raised bump here. I don't know. <laughs> that's pretty sweet. Is that super bright? I think that's going to be pretty awesome. You know what's really fun is I really had no expectation or I didn't even, you know, think about how this was going to look when I started this. So it's even better when, you know, like something really cool kind of comes out of it. Okay, so let's start sanding this guy. I think I'll start at probably 180. And that yeah, is kind of a shifter knob, isn't it? It's bigger, it's bigger than the shifter knob I actually made for my truck. I'm a little disappointed in how small that turned out. Definitely going to be using a three inch, <laughs> three inch blank. But I'll tell you what, um, one thing that's kind of cool about that shifter knob is um, it, it is not yellow it's been in my truck this whole time the whole summer since I made it and it's not not yellowing yet 
So that's pretty nice. That was made with, that was kind of a test with ACC Plus. Everybody's favorite part, sanding. Anybody out there really likes sanding? What's up, Dave? How's it going? Uh, Nick likes to, to stand. Yeah, a few people find it kind of like relaxing or I find it annoying. <laughs> That's not that bad. I just, I'm impatient. I want to get to the, I want to get it done, you know? I enjoy the turning part a lot more. But sanding is important because if you don't sand well, uh, your finish doesn't turn out too good. All right, I think that's probably pretty good with 180. Mainly just want to get the, um, you know, get, get tool marks out with that and then Move on to 240, and then what I'm going to do for this, let me turn the thing off while I'm talking here a little bit. I feel like I'm screaming at you guys. It's the one drawback to this dust collection system. It's really great, but <laughs> it's loud. My ears and yours. And it's, it's funny because the actual dust collector is not loud. The, it's just the suction, you know, like <laughs> at the, the cone here. Has anyone made a yarn bowl? I actually have, uh, just out of wood for my mother-in-law. <laughs> Dave, <laughs> don't do the roll call. The only sand I like is the beach, yeah. Uh, can you flame polish? No, it's not the same thing as acrylic. Um, so like like plexiglass, acrylic, like real um, true acrylic. Um, you might be able to do it with some of the pen blanks because they're made with acrylic acetate, um, but not with resins. It's a t totally different type of plastic. And it's you're just going to kind of stand there with a flame on it. It's not going to do anything though. So I'm taking a little denatured alcohol here. And we're just going to get rid of any 180 grit, grit stuff that might be on there. What, what can happen is some of those little particles from the 180 could kind of be, can, you know, that stuff kind of breaks off the sandpaper. And if you don't clean that off in between grits, then, you know, I moved to 240 grit, but if there's a 180 grit particle trapped on there, then you're just, you're never going to be, you know, going any higher than that. And so you, that's how you can get those kind of, 
those scratches that you can't seem, you're like, why, what's going on? I've been sanding for three hours. Um, that can kind of help out just, just cleaning off the blank in between grits. And that kind of goes, you know, that goes for anything. If you're sanding wood, it's not like you're just going to move on. You're going to, you know, you want to wipe it off in between, even if it, you were just sanding, you know, a board. Get this dust collector going again. Oh yeah, that, that swirl thing, the, the hole in the bowl. Yeah, that was kind of aggravating. I did it by hand, I think. I just used a, like a, a coping saw. Mine was kind of ugly, but my mother-in-law doesn't really care what it looks like as long as I made it. <laughs> so I was like, happy birthday or, you know, whatever. Maybe Christmas. gonna go up to 400 grit and then I'm gonna stop uh, because I'm gonna put on a, a CA finish on this guy so I'm gonna get my denatured alcohol out again I've already wet it wipe this guy off and you can go you know the thing is if you're gonna put a CA finish on there's no reason to go too high 400 might be a little low you know, but I don't think I'd really go much over 600 to 1,000 grit if you're going to put a finish on. The finish is going to fill in any of those little scratches that you have from 400. I mean, think, you know, if you think about it, people, people stand in between coats of, like, polyurethane finishes, um, you know, and just general woodworking with, like, 320 grit. So it's kind of the same idea here. One thing that I, I will do, and so maybe I should say 500 grit, sometimes I'll, I'll come after the 400. This is a piece of 500 um, kind of spongy stuff. And it, it, it's, it's much lighter. And so sometimes I'll come with that, especially on something with curves like that, just to kind of make sure I've gotten it. But like I said, I don't, I don't usually go too much higher than 600 grit if I'm gonna put a finish on.
so one more round of denatured alcohol and I mean I could just uh, you know polish this out as well but I think it'll be a little quicker well I don't know now I'm thinking now I'm kind of going back on this I think we're just gonna polish this out because there's no really no reason to to put a finish on it so we're just gonna keep going and, and we'll polish and buff it out so I can turn the uh, where'd it go turn the dust collector off now because we're gonna move to water uh, but I need to fill a wa cup of water before we get going here so let me go grab one I need to grab a cup I gotta go fill this real quick but I'm gonna give you guys kind of a, a different view this guy you can kind of see a little bit what we're working with. We'll do a little bit of a zoom in here. That turned out pretty cool. I think it could have been cooler with a little bit more, you know, more bend in it a little bit, but it's interesting. I'm digging it, so I'm going to give you guys the front straight on view here while I fill the water cup. I'll be right back. Take two seconds. All right, so we, we just finished up with 400 grit. I'm going to move up to the, um, I can't think of the name of the, what are those things called? The little polishing papers. Hmm. Oh, I can't think of the name of it. What's that stuff called? Where's all the green ones? Hmm. Oh, here it is. Oh, that's not the right one. Oh, I can't think of the name of the, the, <laughs> the sandpaper stuff. Hmm. I don't know. Okay. But I gotta go find a green. I lost, for some reason, I don't have any green pieces. I swear I cut a bunch of them. Don't you hate it when you lose your, your pieces? Huh. That's weird. Oh, I guess they're on this little thing. Okay. So, we're going to put my sham wow down. This there. This one's pretty much brand new, so we're good to go. Got my cup of water. I'll wet that. We'll do a little bit of wet sanding here. So, I just do the... I still can't think of the name of this paper. <laughs> Basically like, like uh, micro mesh, but cheaper, and I think it works a little bit better. There's less grits, and uh, but I'll, usually I, I only use the green and the gray, and then I just go to the buffing wheels. My, it's not micro mesh. Zona, Zona. I was gonna. I kept for some reason Zerka was in my head, and I'm like, that's not right. Zona paper. It's actually 3M. Um, just to let you, just to let you guys know, 
Um, Zona paper is just rebranded 3M uh, polishing paper. So um, people kind of say, oh, is, you know, micro mesh is the best. Well, 3M is a really high quality paper too. So, and it's cheaper. So I'd rather go for it. And actually I like these, I like the colors, number one, um, which, you know, the micro mesh pads have, they come in the colors, but I like the thin pieces of paper like this, and there, you can actually buy micro mesh uh, paper, but they're all they're all like different shades of gray, so you have no clue which one <laughs> you're, you're actually using. I gave up when I found this Zona stuff. I was like, oh, green, gray, pink. Give me some of that, and it's cheaper. Okay. I'm going to give this a good once over with the green and then just, you know, reasonable once over with the gray. But if you can get it to the, the, this green, which is about 750 grit, for the most part, your, uh, the, the triple E buffing wheel will be good. Definitely. You know, if you get the scratch pattern up to a, about a thousand grit, so that gray is about 1100. You can get up to about a thousand, and you you should be be able to get everything polished up, perfect, on on your buffing wheels. I prefer buffing wheels. There's like the polishes, and there's all you know all kinds of different things, but I, for some reason I just get the fastest and con most consistent results using buffing wheels. I've tried a few different things, although I, one thing that I will say is I I do have the um, stadium pin blanks there. What is what do they call it? Magic juice that I need to test out at some point. But the problem I have with that is the first, before you even get to the polishes, they're like the instructions. And I didn't know this before I bought it, but the instructions are like sand to 2000 grit. And I'm like, okay, well, I may as well just buff them. That's two steps. So I don't know. I'm, I'm not a huge fan of polishing stuff, polishes, goo, but I want to, I do want to give it a try. I've heard, a lot of people like that stuff quite a bit. So maybe it is a little glossier than, uh, than buffing. But at the same time, I'm not sure why you need to do how many bottles of that stuff is it? It's like a seven step, pro, a six step process. And you have to, before you even get to the number one, you have to sand up to 2000 grit. So I'm kind of like, that seems silly. I don't know. Yeah, I find the white diamond wheel, it gets things perfectly fine. Sometimes I'll, I'll pull out a car polish. I have uh, Meguiar's like 105. I, I've gotten good results with it. It may make it a little bit shinier, maybe. But if, you, if your wheels are good, see, this is one of the, the things. If, if both the triple E wheel is not kind of gunked up, which mine might be right now, we'll have to kind of see how that goes. But as long as your wheel's nice and clean and, and you know, taken care of, um, I find that the, the triple E and white diamond wheels are plenty for most things. As long as you've also, you know, done a good, good enough job with your sanding. If you haven't done good job sanding, then nothing's going to work. <laughs> you know, it's going to have scratches all over it. All right, so I'm going to stop this. I'm going to dry it off, and I want to take a look and make sure if I was, if this was super important, I was selling, you know, the piece or whatever. It just, it was not just kind of an experiment. I would, you know, really inspect this thing. Um, you know, get the light hitting it the right way. I'm just going to kind of give it a once over glance, make sure there's no major um, uh, scratches that I've missed. And then we'll move on if everything's good. Um, one thing that I really like to do, if you want to give it a really good, if you want to really make sure that you're, you're seeing what's going on, I'm going to kind of zoom out a little bit here. I, I actually prefer using like a spotlight, like one of these guys. Um, and so let me move my 
cone here. So I like to get it behind the piece so that it's, it's like a raking light. So it's bouncing off and that way you should be able to really see deep scratches. And I, I see one right there looking okay. Um, I maybe could do a little bit more work with this stuff, but I think my Tripoli e should take out everything that I've left. And if not, I can always chuck it back up. That's, that's one of the nice things. <laughs> Bottle stoppers are easy because if you, you get to the end and uh, you're like, wow, I didn't really do a good job sanding. It's not like, you know, like with a pen, after you've assembled it, you'd have to disassemble the whole thing. And that's kind of a pain. Um, with uh, stoppers, it's not really that big of a deal. You unscrew it, put it back on the lathe, sand it up a little bit more, move on. So is anybody watching the Olympics? I'm a huge, huge fan of the Olympics. I kind of like the, I don't know, I like both the winter and the, the summer, but I'm kind of a winter. I really like snowboarding and all that kind of stuff. So I kind of like the winter almost a little better. But it's always fun. It's, it's interesting because there's so many really random sports that, I, you know, I don't watch. Um, I, never, I never get exposed to until, except for every four years. So I always find it kind of interesting to, to watch that and see all these athletes. Man, some of these people, their entire life, <laughs> their entire existence basically has been centered around this thing that's, you know, four years away. <laughs> and it's like, man, talk about dedication. I'm just kind of wiping that off a little bit. We're going to move up to the gray. Yeah, it is kind of because I snowboard, but I I don't know. I, I like, there's a lot of winter sports that I could actually do. Um, like I'm not going to be running hurdles, you know, and I'm obviously I'm not going to compete with Olympic athletes, but there's a lot of things in the winter Olympics that you could actually do, you know, kind of thing, or that I have done in the past. So, um, yeah, Lumalite's new, uh, the resin polish might be pretty good. I'm not sure. Uh, that just came out like a couple days ago, so I haven't even, I don't know what it is exactly. I'm sure it's probably like, you know, all those other polishes though. <laughs> so, I don't, it, buffing is my kind of go-to, that's my preferred method. But I'll probably give the, uh, that, that polish, I'll probably get some, they'll probably send it to me. Try it out, see how it goes. Yeah, swimming. I don't know. I guess, I don't know. I say that I like the winter ones, but there's, I really like a lot of the, the summer ones too. Diving, swimming, gymnastics. Um, what else do we really have? Oh, beach volleyball is awesome. Love that one. And just regular volleyball. Polo, water polo is okay. We just watched equestrian. I mean, it's just like there's, all of these things, you know, like you're, you're kind of like, eh. Not that I would really be interested in doing a lot of these things myself, but, or that I could. But cool to watch. Can't even imagine over the, uh, you know, with the pandemic in the middle of a lot of these people's training. I mean, like some of these, the, the training regimens, like it's gotta be four years. Like, and we're talking like, you know, whatever, like some people were too old for certain things or you know, a year later and then they got hurt or something like that. And then there's actually some people that shouldn't have been in the Olympics. They were, they should have been too young. And because of that extra year, they ended up getting in. So it's kind of an interesting year for this stuff. For the Olympics, lots of weird stuff going on. And then no crowds, which I think for some people that might be better for others. <laughs> They're like, man, what a disappointment. All right, so it's looking pretty cool. Interesting, definitely. All right, so let's uh, get the buffing wheels set up. I'm going to scoot you guys like way back. Uh, oh, and I wanted to mention, I actually was going to mention this earlier. Um, I was having some, some people were having difficulty getting to my website 
and we figured out that it was some kind of a weird DNS server issue that uh, only certain um, I, like ISPs, like it might only have been Spectrum because I, I know that I was having a problem um, with it as well when I switched to the, the, the ISP DNS servers. I usually use the public ones. So we, we fixed the issue and I just want to let everyone know what, what we ended up having to do because we couldn't contact anyone. This is like Spectrum's DNS server. This isn't something that I have. It's not a company that is a vendor that I use or anything. Um, so the only, the only thing that we could do was um, switch out my domain names. So I, I always had two. I had NV Woodworks like W-E-R-K-S and then W-O-R-K-S. And so we just flip-flopped them and that seemed to do the trick. So um, don't be, don't panic. If you go to my website, type in W and you can get it, you can get to the, you'll end up at the same place either way you type it in. That's how it was before. Um, but the end point is going to be N-V-W-O-O-D-W-O-R-K-S now. That's, that's the difference. So I don't know <laughs> what the deal is. Um, something weird's going on with their, you know, these, the, that server, the DNS server thing. But that's not, that's out of my control. And there's nobody that I can contact to, to fix it. Um, another way to go is just use public DNS servers. Um, but it requires you to, you know, do, do a little bit configuring on your device. Uh, but you can look that up. It's that's what I always do because they're faster and more reliable anyway. So all good. We're back in back in action. All right. So what I do is I just get this thing set up. This is the triple E wheel and I'm going to use the dust collector because you don't really want to be breathing this stuff. You know, we talk a lot about sanding and, and you know, turning and dust coming off of these things. Well, you really don't want to be breathing this stuff either. Um, you know, the dust coming off of these polishes it's an abrasive it's not like something that you really want in your lungs so i'm going to grab a mask and turn the the dust collector on over there i'm gonna let's see here try and figure out where to put this camera i'm going to give you guys a shot of this stopper how it looks right now as well It's looking, I mean, this is pretty cool looking, I think. What do you guys think about that? I'm digging it. I don't know. I think there's lots of different stuff you could do with this. The, it opens up a lot of possibilities, I think. This may not be the most amazing thing on the planet, but the idea is pretty cool, I think, you know, kind of bending shapes like that and, and redunking them. Let's see here. Oh, ligaments. Ugh. Yeah, see, Magic Juice is stadium blanks. Yeah, we've been using the... Uh, yeah, so stadium pen... I think it's stadiumpenblanks.com. Uh, you can kind of just... Actually, I think Turner's Warehouse has it too. Possibly. I'm not sure. Definitely stadiumpenblanks.com though. But I want to make sure that that's... Do they have their... Uh... Yeah, stadiumpenblanks.com. And they, they have all the like seats, like the wood and sometimes plastic from seats in stadiums. So that's actually another... I got a couple of them. I got... I got a, I got a wooden Dodger Stadium pen blank. I mean, you know, it's just wood, but it is. It comes with a certificate and all that kind of stuff. I got an Ebbets Field. It's pretty sweet. And then I got a, a plastic Dodger Stadium because I'm a Dodger fan. So they sell all kinds of these things. They got tons of them. It's pretty cool. And you get a you get a little certificate thing that's all kind of fancy fancy pants. Check that out. Get one with each pin blank. Pretty sweet. And uh, just so, just if you guys don't know, Michael Harden is he's the one that runs that, and he's the one that's putting on the, the the shoot. Not Mid Ohio, but the other pen uh, pen gathering. The 
Mid-Atlantic, I think it's called, Pen Gathering, Pen Turner's Gathering. Stuart from down in Australia, nice. Thank you. Okay, so let's uh, let's quit talking. Let's a little less talk and a lot more action, right? What do you guys think about that? Is that gonna kind of screw up the yeah, kind of screwing up the camera? I think I'm gonna actually try and get the camera behind that that light because I can't really. I, I kind of want that light on so I can see <laughs> what I'm doing, you know. Uh, well, it's still kind of blowing it out, huh? Yeah. Okay. We're going over here again. Sorry, don't look at this. Don't look at the camera. It's getting nuts. And then I'm just going to move the exposure around. Problem is, if I leave it on, on automatic exposure, it really doesn't work too well. I've never been happy with it. It's just a cheap camera. Okay, so we got that thing going. I'm gonna turn the dust collector on again.
All right, so we're pretty good with the triple E. I'm gonna kind of give you guys a shot. Let's see what it looks like right now. So it's cleared it up quite a bit. It's kind of like a doorknob to me. <laughs> I turned a doorknob. So it's pretty clear. We're gonna go hit it with the, the white diamond now. That's shiny. Okay. Turn off the, the dust collector. All right, let's pull you guys over here. Get this under the, the light a little bit. Oh, man. Kind of bouncing around. Look at that. Got some fuzzies from the <laughs> the buffing wheel, but man. So I, you know, a lot of people don't like seeing the screw threads and things. I don't. I personally think it's kind of cool, uh, so I don't mind that. But you know, if you don't like it, then what I would recommend is to paint, or you could also another another thing you could do is. Like drill out a bigger hole and like recast if you need to do something like this. Pour some more, you know, resin in there. Like so, you know, we had to drill a five sixteenths hole. Drill a half inch hole in here, you know, deep enough to, you know, that, that you wouldn't see it. And then actually, you know, cast more resin in that hole. Fill it back up. Let it sit for a week, and then um, come back and drill it again. And then that way, you know, like basically fill it with resin that's like black or something like that, so you can't see. Um, that way you don't have to worry about it. I'm pretty happy with this. I like it. What do you guys think? I'm pretty excited. And actually, let me put it on the stopper thing, huh? I should probably do that. That'll be even better. That'll be the coolest. Oh, look at that. I need to bring a wine bottle out here so I can pop it in, 
show you guys what it'll look like actually being used. I don't have any wine bottles, I don't think. Ease. What am I doing? Uh, there we go. Stefan! I appreciate it. Thank you for the super chat. All right, so let's see what's going on in the chat. Mid-Atlantic, that's right. Oh, there's Michael. How's it going, buddy? Let's see here. Okay, so got ligaments. Yeah, I usually use an R RZ mask in the shop as well. Let's see. Nice, nice, yeah. Yeah, I like the glitter too. Um, so that's the micro starlight glitter that's on my website. I like that stuff a lot. Uh, you still want to, if you're going for something that's really clear, uh, a lot of times, you know, do tr put less, less is more with that stuff. Like if all you want is just a little sparkle effect, um, and you, but you want to be able to see through your blanks, use a very, very small amount. Like the end, just a little, little scoop, the end of a, a, a popsicle stick is really all you need. It's easy to go overboard with that glitter stuff and then it kind of clouds up everything in the inside if you were trying to like, for instance, if you were going for like a, a clear with a burl chunk, like, you know, a hybrid type thing and you really wanted to see that burl top, especially if you were doing the painting on top and doing all that kind of like dragon egg effect. If you put even, even the micro starlight, if you put too much of that stuff in, it just clouds it up. And you really can't, I've done it, I've done it a million times myself. It's, so you really, you really want to sneak up. Um, here's an example. Uh, I'm going to go to the other camera because I can't really. But here's, this may clear up a little bit better than it is. But here's an example of, of one, and I just recently did this, where I, I put too much. I mean, it's just, it's, it clouds up stuff and you can't really see in there too well. It just needed a little effect, and I kind of went a little overboard. I'm hoping that maybe the outside of this blank is just not very clear, you know, uh, and once I actually polish up this thing. But you can't even see the little dragon guy barely. He's, he's being really kind of covered. So just, just a very tiny amount, a very tiny bit is all you need on those things. Uh, and let me, I'm going to go grab a link for you guys if you want to snag it. You want to snag some of that micro starlight. So uh, for patrons, this Friday is the first Friday hangout. Um, so we're going to be doing, uh, we're casting shavings this, this week, some uh, resin shavings. So it should be pretty fun. I haven't done that for a while. Uh, I got a couple of tics, tips, ticks, tips and tricks uh, that I can kind of share that I, I haven't done it that many times, but I've done it a few times. Um, I can kind of share that and we'll just kind of see what we make. Uh, and so again, the second half of the, the patron hangouts, those are for Patreon uh, members only. Uh, the second half is just Q and A. Um, so if anybody has resin casting questions, uh, a lot of times it's hard on these, these weekly streams for me to you know, answer everybody's questions. And so on the, the Patreon things, it's, it's a smaller group and I can, I'm focused totally on the, the chat the whole, you know, pretty much the whole time. So the demo part is we'll, we'll make a few blanks using those, those shavings and then, um, and then we're going to do the Q&A thing. And uh, one thing for, for anybody that is a patron, we actually have a, a giveaway this week as well. Um, I decided, I thought it'd be kind of fun to just do a giveaway for those, those gator jaw pin blanks that we, we did. It's like the faux gator jaw. So we got uh, three, three giveaways for patrons this week, is, or I guess this month as well so those are a monthly hangout for anybody and if you guys want to join the patreon family you can do so at nvwoodworks.com or patreon.com slash nvwoodworks and i got that link uh down there in the in the chat for micro starlight if anybody's interested but overall i'm pretty pretty excited about this thing it turned out really cool um interesting random effects i think you know one thing just looking at this I wish that it would have been green, like a pearly green. Like I, I would, I wish I would have used um, a pearl powder rather than just dyes to make that bendy shape. Because I think that the like a pearly color, you know, kind of bent around in there, probably would have been a little bit more, I don't know, appealing to my eye. But overall, uh, pretty pretty cool looking little little doohickey here. I like it. Turned out pretty good. So it was fun to turn. Let's see here. All right, Brian, have a good one. Have a great night. 
what do I think of it? I haven't used Illumilite's new resin polish. I, I, it came out two days ago, um, and that was the first time I had heard of it. So I haven't tried it. Um, again, like I was saying, I, uh, I'm, I don't typically like polishes that much. Um, they don't, it depends on what it is, but I'm, I guess I should say pastes. I'm not a very, very big fan of like most of the pastes and things. Um, I do use shallow wax or not shallow wax. Uh, I've kind of gotten to the point where the only thing that I get decent results with is the or triple E ultra shine. That stuff works. Okay. I kind of got that idea from, um, Oh, I can't think of his name. What is his name? I am just brainless today. <laughs> anyway, I got that idea from someone. Saw them using it and it seemed to work. Um, but I usually just like doing wet sanding and then buffing. Uh, it just, it, it works better for me usually. Um, but we are going to try the, the magic juice and see how that goes. Um, I don't know if I would use it because it, it adds so many steps to the process for me for doing, you know, a polish on a pen. However, I have heard good things about it. So I'm anxious to try that out sometime. I just need to get a blank ready, you know, a pen blank that, that I can turn up. So I will probably be trying that Illumilite stuff sometime. I'm sure they'll send me some uh, to, to test out and, and just see how I like it. I, I don't know what the particulars are about that one though. I, I'm, I'm guessing it's probably like a final step type polish, which is probably similar to car polish, those types of things. So I'm not sure, I'm not sure, Eric. But when, once I, yeah, doorknob, sorry, I just saw that. Doorknobs are a cool thing to make actually. It's a, it's a cool project. It's something I wanna make sometime. Um, but uh, so what was I saying? I don't know what I was saying. Sorry about that. So I'll try it out sometime once they send it to me. And see what see what it is like see see what it actually does how it works I, I haven't i think i said it came out only a couple days ago and i don't really know exactly what the particulars are on it so anyway guys i hope you had a fun time tonight uh big thank you to the super chatters i really appreciate that guys you guys rock um and then so next week we'll probably be back to doing something resin oriented i would imagine um i think anyway I do have a few turning projects. Uh, I was showing you guys that dragon egg blank. I need to turn that sometime. So I don't know what's going on. Next week we'll be around though. We're gonna be doing a live stream. So next week, 3 p.m. Pacific time. And then don't forget patrons. Uh, this Friday at 3 p.m. we're gonna be doing some uh, casting, some shavings, uh, some resin shavings in resin. It should be kind of fun. I, it, it can kind of go, you know, sometimes I've gotten like meh results. Like it's like, okay, whatever. And sometimes I've gotten really good results, so it can kind of go two different ways sometimes. So it should be kind of fun. Yeah, no problem, Eric. I sorry about that. I, I a lot of you know I'm actually kind of surprised that they don't send it to me before they launch it. <laughs> that would make sense. I'm I'm one of their affiliates, um, and so I didn't even know about it. I just saw the you know the ad when everyone else uh, saw it that they got the you know a new polish out. But just looking at it, it looks like, you know, like a car polish basically kind of thing. So it's probably going to be your end of the, like a last step type of deal I'm, is what I'm assuming is what it is. Uh, and, it, you know, it might work pretty good. I'm not sure. So we'll have to give it a, we'll, we'll have to give it a shot once they give it to me. <laughs> I'll have to ask Carol next time I'm on the phone with them. All right, guys. So I think that is about it this week. Um, I, so I was on vacation two weeks ago. And then I've been trying to get this pine cone order. I, I've been getting back to the shop and, and trying to get stuff going. So uh, I have videos that just need to be edited. So like just regular videos uh, and a couple of really cool ones, but I need to do some editing and I need to kind of do a little bit of, uh, I'm actually gonna try doing a voiceover on one of them. I've never done that before. And part of the reason is because I don't really have a, like an office to work in. <laughs> uh, I usually edit my videos at like midnight when at, at home and we live in a one bedroom apartment. So I don't really want to be sitting there trying to talk while my wife is asleep in the bedroom. Um, so uh, I might start doing it out at the shop though. So I'm kind of excited in, in the video. What it is, is it's going to be like the milling process of this shelf. Um, and, I, and I think it just lends itself to being a voiceover type video. So I thought I'd try that out. So be looking for that. Uh, I also turned those, the, the bigger round blank of the fabric scraps. Um, so I got a video and that thing turned out really cool. So we got a couple videos, just, they just need to be like kind of finished up. So be looking for those down the road, probably next Sunday. 
I'm hoping that I'll have a video up for you guys. Uh, but anyway, I, I appreciate you guys joining the fun. Uh, sorry for the, the two-week uh, layoff uh, here or whatever, layover for, for streams. But we'll be back to the weekly thing going forward here. And uh, anyway, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of the evening. And I will see you guys, patrons on Friday. I'll see you guys, the rest of you, on next Wednesday. Have a good night, guys.